Hey there, Makeup Aficionado. My name is Ali Kona Bradford, and if this is your first time joining in, I've been a makeup artist here in LA for the past six years, and what I'm doing is sharing with you some of the best looks that you can find on the red carpet with your most favorite celebrities. Today I'm be doing a Rihanna look on my friend Ashley. And normally I would have a picture side by side, but for copyright reasons, I feel like that's something I probably shouldn't be doing. So you can just Google an image and you'll, you'll be sure to find her. It's her purple eye makeup. So we're gonna get started right away. I'm using a synthetic brush and I'm gonna put some concealer on her first. We're gonna go with a pink undertone, close your eyes. And the reason we're using pink, you'll hear me say it all the time, is it cancels out any type of darkness around the eye. So regardless if you have maybe a purple dark circle or brown, this warm concealer will help disguise it a little bit. I'm using a Studio Finish Concealer, which is from MAC. It's a full coverage concealer. And then I'm going up top underneath her brow with a pink color. Excuse me, yellow color. Below is pink. Yellow just gives a great highlight underneath the brow. It defines it a little bit more. And because this look in particular has more of a natural highlight, we won't be using any shadow underneath the brow. It just gives a nice soft creamy highlight. And this brush is a 252. But I'll have the products listed on the video, so don't worry, you don't have to like run and rush and get a pen and pencil just yet. Pen and pencil, pen and paper. Okay, so I've got that down. We're gonna do a little bit of concealer underneath the eye as well. Go ahead and look up. Again, canceling out and neutralizing her skin tone. And the reason we do this is so that way when the shadow goes on top, it doesn't turn into the same color as her skin. So Ashley doesn't really have any dark circles, but if she did and her skin was really purple underneath, if we put like a blue or even a brown under her eye, it would have hues of purple in there. Go ahead and look up. And then I'm just setting it with a blot powder. Close your eyes. Which doesn't really have any color to it. It's just to take down some of the moisture. Now we have our eye prepped. We're going to go ahead and start using an eyeshadow base. I'm using a cream base. I love cream base because it gives something for the color to stick on to. It'll maintain its vibrancy and also it won't get wet and creasy throughout the day. Perfect. So I'm taking that about almost up into the concealer. Normally I would go all the way to the brow, but for this particular look, it's not necessary. I'm doing a synthetic brush, just tapping it in. There we go. So now that we've got that situated, let's go ahead and start with our buffing color. I call it a buffing color. What it does is it just allows a dark color to blend in really smoothly. I'm going with a soft, like an orangey, peachy brown. Using a fluffy bristle brush. This one is a 217. Anything fluffy deposits less color on the lid. And since we don't want super, super heavy color just yet, we want to go with something fluffy. And I like these white bristle brushes just because they're a little bit softer to the touch, so they feel a little bit nicer on the eye. And I feel like they hold color a little bit better than some of the brown bristle brushes. That's just my theory, though. Everybody has their own favorite techniques and how they apply things, so it's whatever is comfortable for you. This color is called Bamboo. It is a matte shade. It's also MAC. You'll notice everything I use is MAC just because I love their products. They have great color payoff. They last all day. So now I'm going to go in with a color called Soft... Wait, excuse me, not Soft Brown. I'm going to go in with a color that's called Brown Script. I like to use both of them a lot. It's got a little tongue tie there for a second, but... This one has a nice orange to it. Orange is a great blending shade, especially for purple. Purple, blue, or black, orange looks really great with. We're just going really softly, not putting too much color on. And this color is basically just gonna lightly peek out. It's not meant to be there for show or anything like that. I'm gonna take a Kleenex and cheat a little bit. This is a great tip for any of you ladies who wanna create lift to your eye. Just follow the guideline of your Kleenex and you'll get that nice upward angle, which this particular makeup does have. Starting with the outside corner and then pulling the color in. You'll always want to deposit most of your color in the outside corner and just drag whatever is left over inside. And then I'm taking it up, whatever is left on my brush, just lightly bringing it upward. I'm going through different motions, some of it's a little bit of a sweeping motion and sometimes I'm going in circles. So I've got her buffing shade down, go ahead and open your eyes. You can always leave your makeup just like this. 
and then add a darker color in the crease if you wanted to, just for a soft day look. But we're doing something dramatic, so we're bumping it up a bit. Okay, now I'm going to do, as weird as this one sounds, I'm going to do a blue shadow base for her purple, just because it's going to give her purple a little bit more color intensity. Close your eyes. And I'm just doing it on the lid and stippling it on. Stippling is just another term for pressing the color down. It allows the color to build on top of itself. And I'm using a synthetic brush. This one's just smaller than the other one, so I can get more precision out of it. And I can kind of feel where I'm going just based on the shape of her eye, like where her eyeball is and knowing how high to take it. If you're doing it on yourself, you can kind of peek here and there. Go and open. So you want it just on that lid part of her eye. Close your eyes. I'm going to build the color just a little bit more. Perfect. I want to make sure this is not a harsh line because if it is, then the powder that goes on over it is going to be a harsh line too. And we definitely don't want that. To me, blending is what separates a really great makeup from a good makeup. You can tell somebody really took their time and they blend out the color really nicely. Okay, so now that I have that on, I'm going to get a fresh piece of Kleenex. And start going on with a matte color called Cobalt. I'm using a thicker bristle brush this time around because it's holding more color. The tighter your bristles are together, the more color your brush will pick up. And then I'm just pressing it in. You notice we haven't done any foundation, and there's a reason for that. If you do your foundation first, this purple is just going to land all over the cheek. And then you messed up your nice foundation and have to do it again. So just to save yourself the effort. We do the eyes first. So I'm just stippling the color on, starting with the lash line and working my way up. We want most of the color intensity to be on the lower part of the eye anyway. All right. So going all the way to the crease, or excuse me, outside corner, using my Kleenex again to give it a nice shape to it. And then pressing the color in. So it's a little bit of a process. You definitely do have to build. If you start going like this right away, it's just going to streak out the makeup, and we don't want that. Ah, so you just learned the key trick, basically. So now I'm starting to build my color up. And then I'll pause here and there. Right now I'll have her keep her eyes closed, but in a little bit I'll have her open it so that way I can see how high the color is going. And that's something you have to stop and do in between your makeup if you do do it with your eyes closed. Okay, go ahead and open your eyes. So now I see that the color is just in her lid. On this outside corner, I want to take the color a little bit higher. So I'm just going to stipple it a little bit. Because if I didn't mention before, this particular color, for some reason, is a little bit harder to blend out. So that's why we have to do the stippling motion more so than the sweeping. And if you do do the sweeping motion, you do it in just little increments. So I'm going to take away my Kleenex. You can see we have a nice angle. We'll continue to build that. Put my Kleenex down again. I want to take it out a little bit, so I'm dropping my Kleenex just a little bit lower. You can keep your eyes straight in front. Perfect. And again, that's just giving me a guideline. If you're doing this on yourself, you would do the same thing. And if you're trying to find your crease and having a hard time, you would just tilt your chin back and look at yourself in the mirror. And that way you can see exactly where you're going. Take it just a little bit higher, not too, too much. So I got the color where I want it. I'll go back with a clean brush. I always blend with a clean brush. If you use a dirty brush, the color is just going to keep on going higher and higher, and that is not what we want. Or at least not for this look. And just know that darker colors push back while lighter colors pull forward. So that's why we are taking the color a little bit into the fold right here, just to push it back a tad. So this, this makeup is subtle, even though, well, you might be thinking it's not subtle because of the purple, but as far as how high we're taking the color, because she has such great lid space, we could take it indeed all the way to the top, but we're not going to. Same thing with Rihanna. She has great lid space, but... Her artist decided to keep it low as well. So I'm still going back and forth with my clean brush, just sweeping it and getting that real nice blend. I'm going little baby circles. Perfect. 
perfect. It's looking good. So now I want to go underneath her eye and get a little bit of color under there as well. So I'm going back with my eyeshadow base and my synthetic brush, look up. I'm doing a little bit underneath. Not too worried about making a mess, because I already know I'm going to have to clean it up in the future, so it's not a big, huge deal. Go ahead and look up. Still use the Kleenex, though, just for a little bit of guidance. I'm going to take the color all the way in. And then just have you look straight ahead. I don't know why, I feel like doing this bottom part of the eye really makes the makeup. And you can see that Ashley has really nice brown eyes, there's a little bit of gold in there, and this shadow just makes it pop so much. So if you do have brown eyes, purple is a great color. It's also great for blue and green eyes as well, so don't get me wrong, everybody can wear this. But I feel like a lot of clients will come to me with brown eyes and always wonder, what do I wear? But here's the thing about brown eyes. Brown is a neutral color. Anything goes with brown. So just remember that. I feel like the only time I have trouble with brown eyes, for me personally, because I have brown eyes too, would be doing a brown shadow. I have to find the right shade of brown to make my eyes pop. Okay. So made a little bit of a mess. Not too bad. Let's go in with a white and clean it on up. These wipes are your best friend, I'm telling you. You make a mess, I'll clean it right up. Go ahead and look straight ahead. Perfect. And then we give her that nice angle. You can even take this makeup out further if you wanted to and really pull it out. But since we're doing something a little bit more subtle, I'm not going to do that today. There we go. So we got our shadow on. Next is going to be the eyeliner, which is pretty easy. I'm going to do something called Black Track Fluid Line. It's a gel eyeliner. So if you have a shaky hand, it's pretty ideal. Most of the time with liquid liner, I think the challenge people have is getting a squiggly line. This one, because of the gel, gives you a little bit more stability. And I'm using a brush 209, close your eyes. I like the shape of this brush. It's synthetic and it's got a round tip to it. And it doesn't tug at the skin. I feel like a lot of times angle brushes can do that, although they're great as a beginner brush as far as giving you good shape. So I'm just following her lash line. And if you're doing it on yourself, again, you could do the trick where you just tilt your chin back and you manipulate your eye shape so that it stretches the skin. And then you can get your eyeliner on there real nicely. Go ahead and open your eyes. I also like to do eyeliner with the eye open. Same thing on myself. I'll do it with my eye open. I'll draw that wing up first and then I just pull it in. So that's the trick, really. If I was doing both eyes at the same time, I would just do the wing on either side first, so that way my wings are even, and then I'd pull them in. You don't want to have one wing that's way up high and one that's going somewhere down south. Okay, go ahead and look at her shape. So I'm going to go into her waterline. It's just going to give a little bit more darkness to the root of her lash. So it'll give the illusion of a thicker lash. Oh, who doesn't want thicker lashes? And if you're doing this on yourself in the mirror, you would just tilt your chin all the way down and look at yourself. That way it stretches the eye. I think people are always worried about making their eyes look too small, and you definitely won't do that as long as you do the inside waterline and the outside. When you do just the waterline, that can make the eye look a little bit smaller. Now I want to connect the outside. So I'm just taking this line and extending it out. It'll make your wing a little bit thicker. Winged out liner is just like the thing now. So you can go big with it and it'll still be nice and it'll be fashionable and trendy. And just like we did the bottom, we'll have to do the top. So look down in this direction. Looking down and out stretches the eyelid so we can get right in her inner corner. Look 
down that way. So we're almost done. Didn't take us too, too long. Having that medium brown tone really helped the blending process along. Does it look straight? Great. I want to thicken this up just a little bit. Because I want to accentuate <coughs> her pretty almond eyes. <laughs> um, <laughs> making my model laugh. There's nothing wrong with complimenting your model. Okay. So we got that taken care of. I'm going to throw some mascara on her, and then I will throw on a false lash. You're probably like, what? Sounds backwards. It's really not. What we're doing is we're creating lift to the lash, so that way when you put the false lash on, it'll lift right into the roots of the false lash. Look down to the ground, please. And if this was yourself, again, just tilt your chin back. You'll be stretching your eyelids out, so that way you're less likely to hit your lash that has wet mascara on it onto your lid and mess up your makeup. Excuse me, Ashley. Look straight ahead. And then wiggle in the lower. I'm just wiggling it through so that way your brush hits every single lash. And then if you make a mess, you can always go back with your wipe and clean it again. Perfect. So I'm going to let that dry. Her brows are pretty much done. I'll go back and fill it in just a little bit. I think I'm going to use some powder, actually, because we put a little bit of pencil in there earlier. The powder is just going to soften the look of the pencil. And I'm just going to use like a nice golden brown, just because she already has the dark color in with her pencil. Pencils are great for giving shape, and then the powders are great for just giving it more of a hair-like look to it. Or if you have thick brows and you just want to fill in the gaps, uh, powder is great for that too. There we go. So all I've been having that gold in there is just warm up the brow a little bit. And now that our lash is pretty much dry, we'll go ahead and add some glue and stick that one on. And then when we get to the second eye, I'll speed it up. That way you can at least see the full look, but then at the same time not have to sit through the entire tutorial. Another thing with brows, I feel like people with black hair will sometimes want to put black shadow in the brow. It's a little bit harsh to do that. Even if you are darker skin, you'd be better off doing a brown, a very, very dark brown, maybe with like hints of red in it. it tends to look really nice. So I put a little bit of black duo on here. I'm waving it around to get it tacky first. And the reason we do that is because if you put the lash on while it's still wet, it'll just slip and slide around. So I go from outside to in, and if your lash was tacky enough, it should just go right on. Does that look straight? Perfect. Look down one more time. I'm going to just lower this so that way it blends in with her inner lash. Look straight. Perfect. So we have one eye done. We can always go back. I like to go back after I get the shadow on and do a little bit of touch up here and there. So now I see where the lashes look straight ahead. I can see that totally okay with adding a little bit more purple so that way it peeks out just a little bit more. And hence, again, another reason why we don't have foundation on. So just taking it in, I'm going to go back and use a Kleenex, my little teeny tiny Kleenex, and continue that angle from where her black line is. In fact, I'm going to cover the black line a little bit so that way I don't get shadow onto it. Just swoop it out so that way it's more angled. And then buff it. Just a little bit. And then for blending purposes, I'll go back with my soft orangey brown. And just tap it on. So rather than streaking that purple, we just fake the funk and go over it with a little bit of that red brown. Plus, it just looks nice next to the purple anyway. And I'm stippling it on so that way I don't disturb the purple too much. Look straight ahead. Again, continue to look forward so that way you can see how high you're taking the color. And I'm going to take it all the way in to get that nice soft blend. And then go back with a clean brush. Always go back with a clean brush. 
make sure that orange is really smooth too. There we go. So we have one eye done. I'm going to speed through the second eye. So I'll get started right away. lighting unfortunately I do have more lighting on one side so if it does look brighter on this side it's just more so because I have a light on that side but there you go we have our Rihanna red carpet look I'm gonna have you look forward to everybody over there and smile because she's so cute <laughs> so tune in every Thursday at 8 p.m. I have a new video and again I'll have another video that's gonna be feature focused we're gonna do just skin because everybody likes to have that flawless skin and then also I'll do an ombre lip on her too so definitely check it out in the future and thank you for watching you can follow me on Twitter at KissMyPassport or on Facebook and Tumblr under Allie Corner Bradford. Thanks and have a great rest of your day. Bye.